Hello and welcome to Live It Tonight. I'm Sonali Krishna. Now we're all so used to popping corks at times of celebration, be it weddings, anniversaries, New Year's Eve or any such momentous occasion. But Ellie is lost felt, one of the only 10 specially trained winemakers of Moet and Chantor, explains why champagne is actually not just a drink to celebrate momentous occasions, but also an everyday drink. So tell me Ellie's, uh, you know, about how champagne is not really a drink that is supposed to be uncorked uh, for, you know, celebrating a moment that is special to all of us. It's history. Champagne has always, always been drunk by king, queens, emperors. They have been the first ambassadors of the champagne, actually. And so their history is linked with success. Success links to celebration. And this is why today champagne is a drink only of celebration. Usually when you uh, pop a bottle of champagne, yes. Uh, there's a lot of halabaloo around it, right? There's yeah. like huge amounts of uh, aggression and, you know, uh, things are flowing <laughs> everywhere. And, you know, you, uh, yeah, there might, it's potentially, you know, a an accident zone. Please show our audience how to, how to uncock this in an elegant manner. On the bottle first, you have here a little dark tab here. Yeah, this you want to do it nicely. So... It's, it's made to make sure that you keep everything nice okay. and still the bottle is quite nice. Okay. Then, I'm right-handed, so my right hand is my, tr my strongest hand sure. and this is going to be the one that is going to stay on the cork from this moment okay. and release the cage until the moment where I completely open the bottle. Okay. okay? So, I release the cage, you, t you twist it six times okay. with, my, uh, with my left hand. Then I have my left hand that is keeping the back of the bottle. I still keep the pressure. And what is twisting? So first, I don't take the cage off. Because when I take the cage off, it, the, the, the cork might want to pop. Okay. So I don't take the cage off. I leave it on. Okay. And what I twist is not the cork. It's the bottom of the bottle. Oh, OK. And so you, this, my right hand is always used to keep the pressure. Oh, OK. Wow. Did you feel safe? That was truly elegant. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, now that Elise has taught you how to uncork a champagne in the most elegant manner, she's going to be telling us about food pairings that go best with champagne. Here we are presenting some food pairings that you can really do with your Moet Imperial, which is a non-vintage white champagne. Mm, sure. What you want to pair with this champagne is savory dishes, uh, oily and savory dishes, a little bit of citrusy aromas okay. will be really, really nice. Okay. So here, for example, if you have a Rosé Imperial with, some, with an, as an aperitif, we can have some nuts. Okay. Nuts is good nuts because is good. Nuts, is, nuts is salty. Yeah, sure. Uh, we can, of course, have it with charcuterie, mm. I say in French. So, so this will be also quite salty and will mm -hmm. bring a lot of aromas, ar will pop out the aromas of the fruitiness of the champagne. Mm -hmm. This is really what we are looking for. Mm -hmm. When it comes to having it with a starter or a main dish, just by smelling it, I can tell you this is going to be amazing with the rosé. What I invite you to do also with the rosé is to try it with uh, vegetables or meat okay. that are in a sauce. In sauce, okay. Yes. Well, Elise, it has been such a pleasure speaking with you and, you know, getting educated on, on champagne and, and, you know, its different uses. And uh, now that we've hit summer, I think uh, hopefully our viewers and definitely me, we're going to be drinking a lot more champagne as regular use and not just for moments of celebration. 